So we're talking about logistic regression, okay? And if you've missed the previous videos in this series, I'll give you the 10 second update. A logistic regression model looks at, and if you look at the starter on the screen at the moment, an outcome variable that is binary. So in this case, diabetes, either positive or negative, and considers the extent to which, if at all, other variables in the data set are able, can be used to predict that outcome, positive or negative. Okay, so that's logistic regression in a nutshell. Um, a nice example here is we've got, we've got glucose, and as the, the level of glucose goes up, the probability of being diagnosed with, with diabetes goes up. Okay, that is using a numeric variable. What we're gonna talk about in this video is how to do the same thing, how to create a logistic regression model using a categorical variable as a predictor. Okay, because you interpret the results or you look at the results slightly differently and it's worth understanding that. And very often you'll have data sets that have both. So you need to understand both. Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at numeric variables as predictors. Now we're gonna look at categorical variables. You can, this video will make sense, by the way, even if you haven't watched the others. So, you know, stick around or go and watch the rest. It's up to you. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Now, just so that you know, this page, everything on this page that you can see at the moment, is available to you. It's a web page. I'm going to put a link at the end of this video that you can click on. It'll take you to a place where you can get access to this page. On this page, you can see wherever I've written code, you can click on show the code and you can see the code. The data that I'm using, you can access if you just install the ML bench package, you'll get access to this data set right here. Pima Indian Diabetes and boom shakalaka, you can replicate everything that I'm doing here. There's a copy code button. You can paste it straight into RStudio and each line of code I've got annotations that explain what's going on there. So getting access to this page is gonna be useful to you. Let's jump right in and look at a categorical variable, a single categorical predictor, right? So at this stage, we're still looking at a single predictor variable. We're gonna talk in the next video about adding additional variables. The data set that I'm looking at does not have a categorical variable, so we just made one. Okay, so if you look, at, if you look up here, uh, all of these are numeric variables. Uh, you know, you could argue the number of times that you've been pregnant, you know, could that be thought of as a categorical variable, an ordinal categorical, perhaps, but it is actually a number, and I think of it really as a numeric variable, but, you know, I understand that that's up for discussion. What I've done is, here's the code that I've written, just to create, using age, I've just grouped them into three. Okay, so you, you, can, you can have a look at that code if you want. But here we go, right. We've still got a binary outcome. Diabetes, no, in green, you're fine. You've got diabetes, red, you've got diabetes, right? And we've got different proportions for the three different age categories. Now, what I want you to see is this. If in logistic regression, you're always considering, when you've got a categorical variable, a reference category. One of these categories has to be our reference category against which the others get compared, right? So we're gonna make young adult our reference category. And if we were to move from young adult to middle-aged, the risk of getting diabetes would go up, right? So we expect a positive relationship in terms of the risk for going to middle age from young adults. If you wanna to go to too old age from young adults, again, you're gonna go up, but not by quite as much. Look, actually old age is slightly lower, right? So we expect you to go up, but not by quite as much. Let's look at the results of our linear model. Here's the code for the model, uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. We've got diabetes as the outcome variable always has to be binary and age groups, which is the new variable we created, which is categorical. Otherwise, you use the, the command for a, you know, the function for a linear model, but then you say that it's binomial, which makes this into a logistic regression model. You call the summary, and boom shakalaka, here's your output. Now, here we go. Let's look at these results. We'll come back to the intercept, but we've got two coefficients here. We've got middle-aged, and we've got old-aged, older adults. We do not have young adults on this, young adults are our reference group. And it, and we said that all of these numbers are gonna be comparing uh, that age group to the reference group. So if you compare young people to young people, you're gonna see no change. So it's not even included in the model. However, if you went from young people to middle-aged, we see that there is a positive uh, estimate. Okay, now we've said previously that this 1.3 is not an actual change in probability, it's the logarithm, it's the natural logarithm of the odds. Think of it as a proxy. In other words, if it is positive, then the probability is also going to be positive. 
And if it was negative, the probability would be negative. And if it was zero, the probability would be zero. So, you know, at this point, it's a proxy. You can't do mathematical jiggery pokery to work out the actual probability. But for our purposes, this is fine. We can say that uh, going from young to middle aged, there is a positive increases your risk of diabetes. And this is statistically significant because we've got a very, 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 very small p value. Um, 8.16 times 10 to the power of negative 15. Tiny, tiny number. Same with going to the older age group. And remember we said it would be an increase in the risk, but not as much as to the middle age group. And there you see that that's the case in the numbers here. Again, statistically significant. So we're happy. Um, we're happy with this. Now, the next video, we're going to talk about how to add more than one variable into your model. And that's when it becomes important to understand these other numbers, right? The residual deviance, the AIC, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to talk about those now. I'm going to talk about them in the next video. Uh, but so for now, you've now seen how to interpret the results of a categorical predictor. Interestingly, the intercept really represents uh, the natural logarithm for the risk of uh, of the odds for the reference group. In other words, it, it being young uh, means that you're less likely to get um, to get diabetes. Okay, so uh, let's come back in the next video. If you want to get access to all of this stuff, the code, the annotations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there'll be a link on the screen at the moment that you can click on. Um, and it'll be a little card and you can access all of this. Okay, hope you're doing well. Take care, don't do drugs, always do best. Speak to you soon, take care. Boom shakalaka, bye.